Welcome to the 23rd episode of the Broken Pictures podcast slash YouTube show, where we discuss the top three things that you may have missed in pop culture this week. There could potentially be spoilers for your favorite TV shows, movies, comic books, and or video games. You have been warned. This is The, the FOMO, FOMO Show. show. Hey guys, this is Dylan. And I'm Lydia. This is Quinn. And once again, we'd like to say thanks for joining us by YouTube or podcast. Hello to all of our new watchers or listeners in the States and internationally. And a special thank you to those who are returning to this weird show that we do. If you want to keep the conversation going or support the show, you can, of course, comment below. But you can also find that info in the episode notes or the website at www.broken.picturesno.com. Also, leave us voice messages or questions that we can play on the show. Go to www.anchor.fm forward slash the FOMO show to talk to us and do that. Or if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon for notifications of new videos. Podcast listeners, please leave us five stars in your podcast app. Boom. That'd be great. Thanks. Sorry, that was a bad sit impression. We got some uh, special right. notes. We do. So we talked. We mentioned it last week. I already mentioned it last week. We talked about it last week, and we're still going. We want to hear what you guys think about us going live. Uh, the sooner the better. But there's still uh, some things I'd have to get checked out before I know if we can do it or not. But I want to know what you guys think. If the show were to be uh, consistently on the same day, same time, every day, every week, not every day, every week, um, would would you be more prone to tune in? Would you be able to tune in better? Uh, and of course, it would still be available on YouTube or Facebook Live, wherever we upload it to. After that point, uh, so, you know, you wouldn't have to just watch it live, but um, I know for me, it would be a lot easier uh, with editing and stuff like that, but... Uh, uh, the podcast would also come out a lot sooner, probably uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. So if the show came out on Tuesday and things were a lot more relevant, would you be more up to watching it? Questions I follow would. you. Question, question. What did you say? said I would. You would. <laughs> I'll be here. Every I'll day. Yep, yep. Sp -sp -sp Spoiler. Yes. So we will be get we'll we will we will be getting of the spoiling. Oh, we gave me. So <laughs> we will be getting spoilery. Uh, we're not going to purposely spoil your favorite fandom, but we will talk about newsworthy items. Uh, if there's a fly, spoiler, there's a fly. Uh, so, <laughs> but we do we do get into uh, some pretty good discussion and some things come up but so before each topic know that there will be potentially spoilers for things. what are you guys watching and playing this week stranger things stranger, stranger things, things. Yeah. Like, i hope right. everybody's watching stranger things stranger things set a streaming record this past it week. did yeah so congratulations, Stranger Things. We'll see you, I guess, next year. Hopefully in season four. <laughs> I think like it takes 20, like two 20, years. Yeah. Is it? Oh, That's no, what Jessica Choba said. Oh. Mm. I don't I didn't know that mm -hmm. they had confirmed a uh, season four yet. But they of course we'll, season you know, four. Just don't know when. We'll be getting it. I just hope next year. I but you know. Yeah, well. it take, it takes a while, a couple years for it to come out. For eight episodes, Mike. For real. For eight. <sighs> One hour long episodes. That, wonderful like, episodes. Yeah, they're yeah, wonderful right, episodes wonderful. and they're done really, really well. So we're not complaining necessarily. Yeah. We just yeah, love no. them so much we want them sooner. Yes. Y'all so. chose quality over quantity. Yes. Yeah. And I it's like the that. same concept of like when you finish a book and then you go and you find out that the the author's still writing the next one. It's like, no, <laughs> don't do that. George R. R. Martin. <laughs> How many R's were in that? There's a lot. I had to clean my throat. George R. R. Martin. George Dinosaur Sound Martin. 
<laughs> uh, we're watching the OA, and yeah. if you haven't watched season two of the OA, Woo. if you thought season one was weird, man, just yeah. combine season one with Legion and everything else weird in the world, yeah. leftovers, and... Mm -hmm. But it's like good weird... It's like, I can't wait to see the next episode because where the heck is this going? I think he's getting confused because it's more of like, what did I actually watch? <laughs> what am I actually going to watch next? So I think that that's I why I want to watch it because I'm just like, what the heck? Yeah. I mean, season one was uh, something that she really wanted to watch. Yeah. I was going to watch it because it was popular at the time, but it got... No, we watched it before it was cool. Before okay. It was cool. Yeah, there was a couple of people that were like, "Oh, I should love that show," but <laughs> it was, it was weird. Yeah. And and by the end of it, there was some like I was like this on it. There were some things I really liked, and some things I just like. Whoa, that's that's weird for me. Can I get uh, some examples <laughs> of this weird? Not without spoilers. She... Not without spoilers. Yeah. No, I'll tell but you the premise. Se season okay. two is. I'm, so, okay, just yeah. the premise of it, Draco Malfoy's dad. Isaac uh, Newton. No. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Crap. I'll tell you in a minute when Draco I look Draco Malfoy's up. dad. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. As Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. This girl who was born blind. Uh-huh. Or no, she something happened. She got blind. Yeah. Uh -huh. She gets she was in a wreck. gone, and she comes back not blind. Okay. And also believing she's an angel. <laughs> oh. And, it, and it's how all that transpired. Okay. Yeah. And Phyllis laughing Vance from Bob's Vance. No! <laughs> I ruined it! Let me do it again. Yes. Me, okay. okay. And also Phyllis... <laughs> damn it! <laughs> <laughs> And also, Phyllis Lap and Vance from Vance Refrigeration is in the show as well as like okay. a main character, oh, and she's it's so super precious. weird. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love her. Like just as a human being. Yeah. Phyllis she's in Smith. Two. And yeah, she's just great. Um, so it's just like this really, really weird show. Um, but in a good way. And it's produced by Plan B, Brad Pitt's oh. production company. Yeah, it's weird. Did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, all he had to tell me was that. He, he just says <laughs> okay, weird well, things. Okay, well, then that. <laughs> yeah. This is probably one where he was like, I don't know, babe. And Angelina at the time was like, this is a good one. Go for it. <laughs> Go for <laughs> Which is probably why we're watching season two, because Dill was like, you really want to watch season two? I was like, yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah. And I work with a guy who's like, have you watched the OA? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so we finally have been watching it this yeah. week. Yeah, I, I wasn't really into watching season two because the first one was like, eh. But now that we're into it, I'm just like, I really, I'm really Says the person the who's like, it's good weird, it's good weird. I, I'm, like I'm liking times. season two. It's like, it's so okay. weird. Like yeah. this last episode, I don't, if you've seen o, the OA season two, Old Night, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to like. Yeah. I don't know. What, I, yeah, it's, it's so out there. Yeah. It's like just when you're just like, okay, this show is weird. It's just like, oh yeah, here's left field. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like those math equations where it's like if you have 47 pancakes and you eat dogs on the roof, what happens at noon? <laughs> what? It's like exactly. Uh, That's exactly what it is. I don't understand, yeah. but I like it. Yeah. So this is basically turned into an OA review. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna move on. Uh, okay. What else did we watch we, for p our pizza movie night? We Tarzan. Wow. Tarzan. OG Tarzan. Where's the remake on that one? We don't want one, so <laughs> shut your mouth. George to the Jungle was enough, okay? George of the Jungle? No. There was George, Jungle George, to George Jungle, of the jungle. and oh, yeah. George of the Jungle <laughs> at the same time, and they were both horrendous, <laughs> and so we don't want that. <laughs> Crisscrossing. It's a remix. Yeah. We okay. love Jonathan you, Tim Taylor Allen, Thomas. and we love you. <laughs> what? Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Just get thrown in there for good measure. Okay. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, the, Tim Allen's kid yeah. in Home Improvement. I forgot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be okay with that. <laughs> okay. All right. Think, it's yeah. time. 
Now, time for the number one movie of the week, and it is Spider-Man. Far from home. It's, you know, not surprising, but Spider-Man, congrats. Second week? No, no, no first it's, week. It's it just been out. a long week, because yeah, it came out it last been Tuesday. A long week. <laughs> we film on Tuesday, so it's been a week for us. Uh, for y'all, longer, because you're watching this later. But Which live may solve? <laughs> Shameless plugs, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> um, it's nine uh, percent fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, the audience score is ninety six percent, and everybody says Spider Man Two. Who? <laughs> yeah, like Tobey Maguire Spider Man Two. Yeah, yeah. People are calling it just like some people are saying it's not as good as Homecoming. Some people are saying it's the best Spider Man movie that they've seen. Yeah. Uh, and some are saying that it's just okay. Like it's up there with Spider-Man 2, but it's not quite beating Spider-Man 2. It's not quite beating Spider-Man 2. Even though it technically is a Spider-Man 2. So it's Battle of the Twos. Treat yourself. Wish I had buttons for that. We'll get there. We'll get there. Keep watching and keep donating. Start it's always gotta be 2017. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there where I have buttons. Burr, 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 oh my burr. gosh. All right, moving on. <laughs> All right. New releases. Watch our rise from mediocrity. <laughs> it's, it's the best story ever told. One minute out. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm getting in my, my in my headset. It's time to move on. They're giving me the music. <laughs> so I guess I'll shut up. <laughs> So uh, new releases on disc and digital in theaters as well this week are going to show up on your screen right now. The top three things in pop culture this week. Number one, Comic Con. It's like next week, right? Like yeah. next week or is next week? It is Comic-Con. next week. It is next week. The San Diego Comic Con, which is I'm gonna the say big one. the big one. Yeah, it's the it's, best. It's, <laughs> it's the one where everybody goes to. It's the one everybody's like, okay, we got our trailers. Let's just like sneak in there and put it in here while this panel's going on. Put what in there? A trailer. A so trailer. I, I just want to say, <laughs> if you're listening and you know how to get us to San Diego Comic Con, as like how to sign up as news people or whatever as a podcast, help help a brother out. <laughs> <laughs> We've never been. We're doing a no. podcast on Comic Con. Yeah. Well, I've been to a Comic Con. <laughs> it's been it's been one. <laughs> it was a good one. Nice. Just two tickets will be fun. What? Oh, you don't want to go? Yeah, because we can, we're just all gonna go. <laughs> Why not? Go? We're just all gonna go to California. <laughs> you gonna pay my bills while I'm gone too? If you can do that, we'll then you can hook me up with four tickets. We'll figure it out. Oh, I have a job. <laughs> Once in a lifetime. You know you're about to leave your pregnant wife at home. <laughs> 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 you're me and Shane can come over here and hold down the fort. How about that? <laughs> but have you guys heard any of the news? Any things that's going on? Okay. I know well, um, Marvel is coming in big on yeah, Hall H. They are. Which is the, if you don't know, Hall H is the big one. Like if you, all the footage you see of people at the tables doing stuff. A dumb long table. That's Hall H. Yeah. That's, it's legendary. And one thing that is like rumored, which probably means it's going to happen, is like, an Avengers Endgame reunion where like mm-hmm. all like the original oh, I thought cast. that was confirmed. Oh. Well, the Russo like... brothers I, th- I think confirmed that. Oh okay. Then since I've read my thing they've confirmed it and they're all gonna be there. Okay. So it's gonna be fun. Maybe. 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 We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> We're amateurs. <laughs> We're just fans. We're not like journalists. Yet. Yet. We're Maybe. getting there. Getting there. Uh, With but... your help and support, <laughs> another a lot of trailers. We can't dropping. make another show without you. 
Sorry, go ahead. That's cool. Taking a little too far. <laughs> I'm just, I've watched some shows where they do that, and so that's oh. what I'm mocking. Like, oh, okay. So we can continue to make this show. We need your help. Why do they you do sound that? Like Sarah <laughs> Clocklin. I know, whatever. right? That, that that's what I feel like when I'm watching it. And they do that. Anyways, oh. sorry. All we're asking for is a thumbs up, just like the Ding. video. And that bell. That's yeah. It, you know. Yeah. If you want to subscribe and keep watching, that's up to you. Anywho. Okay. Sorry. That's cool. Um, the what you call it? The trailers. I know there's some that are gonna be like there's gonna be another Dark Fate trailer. Mm. Uh, Terminator. Yeah. New Terminator. If you don't know. Eh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Arnold. There's gonna be a debuting trailer for Jay and Silent Bob the reboot, mm, mm. which is gonna be fun. Uh, there's gonna be you know Marvel Phase Four news, mm -hmm. Rick and Morty Lots season four. Of phase Four news, apparently. Yeah. Uh, Rick and Morty season four. They have like you can go to like uh, the San Diego Comic Con website and see like the schedule programs that they have, and they there's a lot of gonna be. A lot of interesting things. Really? Mm -hmm. I know uh, interest, interesting things not going to be there. DC is not showing up this year. They basically owned it last year with Aquaman. Mm -hmm. And um, there's another one not showing up. That's a big one. Why not? I, I don't know. Marvel Marvel didn't go last year just because they didn't have a lot to promote. No, they just had so, like uh, Infinity War and Endgame. So I was like, well, it wasn't even Endgame at the time. Yeah. It was just the fourth Avengers movie. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't tell you anything about it, so yeah, they might so. as well just not go. Yep. Oh, so it's not like a stand of protest or something. They just ain't going. No, they're just not no, going. No, 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 no. DC's yeah. probably, oh, probably. I feel like they're going through a lot of restructuring and everything, especially with um, this, you know, the HBO Max stuff that's going to be coming out and a lot of their shows getting canceled on DC Universe, maybe. Yeah. And so they're just going to kind of not, there will be some of DC there, but not like as far as the movies go, they're not there. Yeah. The big yeah. DC presence. Because this is going to be the final Comic-Con for uh, Stephen Amell, Stephen Amell. Oh, and Arrowverse. Arrow. Yep. The whole, like, all of Arrowverse is going to be there. Like, you hear all the news from, like, for Flash, Supergirl, Black Lightning, and then kind of what the final season of Arrow is going to entail. Mm, so that's going to be a big one for them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, yep. DC on the TV side, not the movie side. Which is better at, the po at this yeah. point. So, can y'all clarify something for me? Mm hmm. There's like 50 different acronyms. It's either like DCEU, DCU, DC. What, oh. like, what, what's the TV one? I can see how that's one? confusing. So, so the, D, the DCEU is their extended movie universe. Yeah, which is in flux right now because yeah. it's not all going to be connected necessarily. But there are some movies like Wonder Woman and Aquaman that did well. And so, like, I mean, like right now there's talk of The Flash. Uh, Ezra Miller supposedly was was out uh because they were gonna go dark and then those directors left they couldn't make it work and then they went with a light-hearted director and ezra miller said no i don't want to go light-hearted let me try to write a dark screenplay and they said okay sure and then he delivered and they said no <laughs> and so what then, is the dc tv universe yeah so anyway yeah oh. the, the dc eu is in flux right now and yeah. And, but there are other DC movie properties like the Joker that are moving forward or the or the new Batman that are moving forward that aren't necessarily <laughs> connected to the DC extend, expanded universe. But the, the DC, DC on TV is, is called the Arrowverse. Yeah. The but, ones that are all connected, they're called the Arrowverse. There are ones out there that aren't connected at the moment, like uh, Krypton on sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is supposed to be really good, I hear. So good, because is Lobo it? is so cool. <laughs> he just looks kind of, TV versions just kind of It's okay, luster. that's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> I need cinematic quality. Brainiac is, like, oh, when yeah? Bra yeah, he, well, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's just like, I don't know who these people are. <laughs> I'm just sorry I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what? 
else? Oh, there's the DC streaming. Oh yeah, uh, which is the thing. DC universe, universe which that's, is yeah, that's like their version of Netflix, and it has its cool. own shows that might end up being connected or not connected. <sighs> They're all loosely connected at right. this point. Like, oh my goodness! The because Titans, DC is not good with interconnection. They obviously not. They suck even, at even this. Even in their <laughs> comics, they've been. If like, you can describe to me in one or two sentences what they're called and <laughs> if they connect, then it's not good. The branding is. You not need awesome. to get your crap. DC together. Comics. They. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just and everything. No wonder everybody just says DC. The, um, the umbrella of DC comics, so which stupid. is owned by Warner Brothers. <laughs> it's which so I mean, worn by just like more Marvel. with Comic Con. Yeah, just like more Marvel's owned by Disney, DC is owned by Warner Brothers. Um, um, some of the exclusive pops of Funko, 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 Funko pops that are coming mm -hmm. out. Uh, one is a Batman with holding a little Comic Con bag. Uh, they have. Banana splits, Pez, Pez dispensers that are coming out. <laughs> oh, Which man. I can't believe that they're leaning into that. Really are. Yeah. I, yeah. If you guys don't know, do you remember the banana splits? Like the crazy morning show of people in costumes running around doing crazy crap on like early 80s or ish or whatever. It was like a cultural phenomenon because it was so weird and crazy or whatever. It seemed like almost like the Bozo show where it was like a local type thing that mm -hmm. kind of went nationwide. But somebody has brought them back, but not in a way that you would expect. Boy. It is a horror film and they are animatronics gone wrong. So, yeah, it's... it's that don't scream 80s. Yeah. <sighs> oh. You just looked them up and now she had a realization. Yeah. Okay. I remember now. Yep. But I believe that's that's all everything I could find. Oh, uh, HBO. The Game of Thrones is coming. And oh, it, yes. <laughs> I'm in a, uh, a, a, a Facebook group where it's, it's like Game of Thrones stuff. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> when that news came out, everybody was like, ooh, they better watch out because people are not going to be happy. It's now, like, when oh, you Google going, yeah. bad writers, they show up. Yeah, they're the D &D top. come up. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, they're they're Sorry. going to Comic-Con to do a victory lap for season eight, and it is so right. going to backfire. <laughs> but you also, like, yeah, that's probably an, another show rocks. where I talk about the sympathy that I have for them. Can you imagine, like, your life's work being just... They Lit shot on themselves. Fire, literally. They shot themselves by in the a dragon. On that. <laughs> <laughs> literally, just said they did that to themselves. Though, Dracarys to they, my career. Like, all the nerds have taken their focus off of Ryan Johnson and are now on David Benioff and David Weiss. <laughs> Ryan Johnson was just in a corner for like the past two years, and it's like. I, th I think they're gone. I'm going to run. Speaking <laughs> of Ryan Johnson, have you seen the trailer nope. for his new Knives Out? No. Dude, I've been watching this since he started first started naming casting for it. And it's got everybody you would ever want to see on screen in it. And huh. it's the craziest looking murder mystery. With, with, murder uh, mystery? With, yeah. And it's uh, Daniel uh, 007 himself. Daniel, Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig as a Southern... Like Baptist type <laughs> detective. It's like, I'm telling y'all, you better not leave this house. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Ooh, and it's, it's Chris got Evans. Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm going to watch it. Curtis. Yeah, it, Michael oh, man. Shannon. Michael it looks Sanson. so good. Like, this is Ryan Johnson's element. Like, this is his element. Like, not he's going to shine sinkers. in this movie. Yes. Not As, uh, for all the bad things I've said about him in Star Wars, that I don't think he belonged in that. But. This is his Elmo element. This is Elmo? where he belongs. This, this is his Elmo. Elmo. <laughs> this is where he belongs. Elmo, I like it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's me, Elmo. <laughs> Y'all are creeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, totally off subject. I know this is random. Have you seen uh, the Robin Williams and Elmo thing that's been making the rounds? No. Oh, my gosh. It's, look it up. It's pretty great. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, it's like the outtakes, and he's like, I, I can't say that. <laughs> 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 and then Elmo messes up. He lines like, Elmo 
had one line. <laughs> <laughs> Elmo. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's still is a lot of just mainly just kind of rumors. You know, there's going to be tons of comic writers, tons of comic book artists, and everything that you'd want at San Diego Comic Con. When time comes for, well, things to actually like happen and we see actual things from Comic Con, we'll cover it. Until then, it's one, one, I'm sorry, an, another little sidebar, very, very short, super short. One of the Marvel uh, artists, comic book artists, released um, Keanu Reeves as Moon Knight, like his rendition of it, and said, This is who Keanu should be in the MCU. And he, he was like, He could do this personality, this personality, and this personality. He's got, a, he's got it all. He should play it. And this is what it would look like. It looks pretty awesome. Let's do it. I smooth believe, like, at the end of Marvel's thing, you made me have a sidebar now. Like, yeah. there's my, oh, we almost forgot. In introducing, name whoever Keanu Reeves is going to be, and then Keanu Reeves is going to show up on stage again. Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah. yeah. If, if they don't use that or have Ryan Reynolds come out in Deadpool uh-huh. outfit, like, <laughs> on the John Campia show, they were talking about how uh, they should do a one more thing at the end and have Ryan Johnson dressed as Deadpool, dressed as Steve Jobs, come out and be like, one more thing. <laughs> Deadpool 3. Da, 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 da. Is coming soon. That would be pretty great. What did he say? Hmm? No, you're breathtaking. Is Keanu that what Reeves, it was? Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. You're breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> but now... <laughs> wink, wink, nod, nod. Y'all might leave us because it's the next subject. But number two, because y'all are about to leave, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is well, Disney, kind of. More like Disney's remakes and their live action remakes. And why? I ask as an adult. But at the same time, I realize these movies are for kids, but... <laughs> they are our lives. Yeah, I mean, like we, I was a kid once. <laughs> <laughs> this is our our whole life, our childhood. So, what? What? Before we continue, what do y'all think of the all the Disney remakes that have come out so far over actually the past ten years, mm. nine years? Because 2019 first one came out in 2010 was Alice in Wonderland. Actually, you, even further back. Even further back. 101 Dalmatians. Oh, um, well, close. kinda. If you think about it, like, remakes are getting done all the time. Remakes have been getting, gotten, getting done all the time. <laughs> I mean, almost every movie, if you have seen it and you're like, oh my gosh, I love that. Somebody's going to say the new one or the old one. And you're like, what? What yeah, are you talking exactly. about? Exactly. Even if it's a, a remake. Titanic is a remake. Yeah. Or so, a remake of some obscure French what? film or, yeah. or, or Japanese Titanic, film. Titanic. The movie we all know, except for some people. Because <laughs> Dylan's never seen it. Went on yeah. 3D version. That movie's like a, a it's day It's a remake. Long. Did you know The Ring is a remake? Uh, so many movies are remakes. Yeah. Stop shattering the glass <laughs> in my head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in reality, we're upset because we didn't ask for this remake. That's why we're upset. <laughs> Nobody wanted it. We loved the first one. You know why we didn't like the second one? I mean, you know Aladdin. why we don't... Why, what? Like Aladdin. I mean... Which one are you talking about? Just in general? No, I'm just talking about in general. Because if you think about Titanic, did I watch the first one? No. Didn't know that's a thing. Did my parents watch the first one? No. Did my great, 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 great grandparents <laughs> maybe watch it? Possibly. But didn't nobody talk about it? Nobody cared. Okay? You took things that we cared about and you remade it. Mm-hmm. And that's the issue. But, I mean, they've been making money. I'm like, I, I even got like yeah. numbers here. Like, so the first one on my list, like Beauty and the Beast, its budget was $255 million. Mm-hmm. Its box office was $1.2 billion. Crazy. And that one even had some backlash too. What was which, that? Huh? Beauty and the Beast. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> it, it did very, very well internationally. Mm-hmm. Like Jungle Book budget one point not one so one hundred and seventy seven million made nine hundred and sixty six million. I, I love that one. 
That one was. Eh, I, I watched it one. and I actually enjoyed it. I was we. I was confused if the snake was a girl or a guy. I didn't know if the snake. It made me question if the snake was a girl or a guy, like the original one. So I don't uh, know. It was Winnie the Pooh. The same voice. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Which we still don't know if it's a girl or a guy. <laughs> True. It's me, it's Pooh Bear. Mm. Oh, um, Bob. <laughs> Dumbo's budget was $170 million. It made $352 million, And it's like critic score was 47% on Rotten Tomatoes. And IMDB was 6.4 out of 10. Hmm. Cinderella, $100 million. Yeah, we haven't seen it. I haven't seen like I haven't seen that one either. Cinderella, one hundred million box office, five hundred forty-three million. Aladdin, its budget, one hundred eighty-three million. Its box office so far, because I'm th- I think it's still in theaters, is nine hundred twenty-three million dollars. And it, it's become Will Smith's highest-grossing movie. Really? It is outdone Independence Day. That is depressing. <clears throat> he Very made a depressing. video about it. You know what I just thought about, though? Mm-hmm. You know what I just thought about? Our generation that grew up on the first version of these movies, or whatever version of these mm-hmm. movies that we love, we get to take our kids to see these movies that some mm-hmm. of them have not seen the originals, if yep. you're a weirdo. But <laughs> if your kids haven't seen the original, and then you get to take your kid to go see Aladdin, and you're seeing something that was such a huge part of it, and you do it well... Like Maleficent, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sleeping Beauty. There you go. Like, I loved Maleficent. Like, I will watch it all the time. Such a good remake. Air quote remake. Uh, Because it took, it put a new spin on it. It was fun. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So, like, I'm okay with things like that. I'm not okay with Mulan. I'm not okay with The Little Mermaid. I'm not okay with, y'all want to hear it? The Lion King. The Lion King. I'm not okay with it. Why? Because it was a cartoon. Why turn it into something that looks even more fake? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I'm saying like cartoon is is cartoon. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But now you made a CGI, which I'm going to critique the whole time. <laughs> because but like, CGI. oh my gosh, that does not look like a real lion. I get, I get you. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, okay. It's Wait, like I'm, when you watch Jurassic yeah. Park and you're like, oh my gosh, that dinosaur is so not real. It's like, duh. <laughs> no, duh, it ain't real. Uh, you but you still critique dinosaur, it. You know? Like, yeah. it still is important to like, why take something? I have I have faith in Jon Favreau is the only reason I'm down with it because Lion King was like my life when I was a young teenager. Jon Favreau, you can do anything you want, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I support you. It's okay. Even if your cooking show don't turn out, let me know. <laughs> wow. Okay. <clears throat> but, <laughs> but, this is literally um, just a show about me picking up actors. <laughs> I'm, just <laughs> I'm just kidding. But the Disney movies, like they, not all of them have done bad. Like they may have had some of them, like had some sort of backlash or something to go along with them. But for the most part, they're making they're making their money back and mm. then some. Yeah. And like even. And I think part of the reason that they've done the casting that they did with The Little Mermaid the way they did was partly because they're like, these movies are making us money. Well, now let's get a little weird with it or experimental. Let's let's see what yeah. we can do. I've seen a lot about that. And as a white male, I'm not supposed to have any opinion on this besides I support you. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm a racist. And just just me saying that out loud makes me a racist in some people's eyes. You know? And, I mean, yeah, I wanted to see a, a red-haired, you know, white girl, whatever. But I was to- I really wanted to see Zendaya play yeah. Little Mary Mary too. I'm That's so, why I'm upset. That. Yeah. Me too. But, I mean, so, like, when this casting came out, I didn't know who this girl was, you know? I didn't know if she had acting chops or if she had singing chops or anything. Apparently, she sings like an angel. Yeah. And she's been on TV. And, and, Grown and she's extremely talented. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm excited for to see what she's going to do. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I support her. I want to see what she's going to do. But I can't deny that part of me is like... This is based off a Danish fairy tale, 
you know, and some people want, I mean, that's very, very choppy waters right there because everybody's like, it's a mermaid, it's fake. You know, yeah, yeah, but, there, there are mermaids from all parts of the world. There are mermaid stories that that go beyond Han Christ, Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid story. But this is that story. And, it's, you know, yeah. if we, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't know how to resolve it in my head. And I'm, I'm, I'm one of the people trying to make sense of it, not trying to shoot her down just because she's black. That's racist. Just because she's black, that's wrong. I'm not trying to do that. I want to see what the girl can do. I'm excited. But at the same time, I'm trying to figure out just in my head, okay, well, what's okay and what's not okay with this race thing? Because I, I have no clue. I'm coming from the other side. You know what I mean? I didn't grow up black. I don't know what it's like to be a minority. I mean, I lived in New York for a couple of years and white was a minority, but <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. You know, I, I just, I, I, I'm trying to find my footing in this, to be honest with you, just to be completely they, honest, you know, like when stuff like this happens and it happens in movies like remakes of things all the time like uh, a few years back the woman who plays letty what is her name what is oh. her name? Oh, michelle rodriguez yes uh she was like there was like this rumor that they were wanting her to be green lantern as like not necessarily how jordan jordan but they were catching her out she was getting in her car and she was like i don't want to be green lantern you don't have to make him different just because i'm different he can just be a white dude wearing a green suit let's let that be it and i'm like that's uh, like that's fine like if that's who the character's supposed to be let the, that would be the character who's supposed to be like if michael b jordan was gonna be superman that's fine but he can't be Clark Kent Superman. He can there are there is a black Superman and his name's Val Zod, but wanting not Idris Elba? Hmm? I'm just kidding. <laughs> but he's one, too old. He even said he was black Superman. <laughs> <laughs> he's hind out, but now he's dead. So he yeah. can be uh, Yeah. Oh, so okay, yeah. Okay. So that that's why I'm trying to that I'm I'm sorry to let's cool. jump back in here. That's why I'm trying to find my footing because like, for instance, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, Mulan cast an all Asian cast. I was upset when they cast the ancient one from Dr. Strange as a white lady I was just because uh, traditionally as an Asian male, mm -hmm. uh, could be Asian female, but I thought that needed to stay Asian because I feel like that's trading out, you know, yeah. with less representation, you know, but, um, but if we were to make Mulan with with some white characters or uh, some or not white characters, <clears throat> white actors, white actors, yeah, yeah, or um, uh, Lion King, which is an African story. Well, I mean, not originally it, it, because it's based off some Japanese ripoff cartoon that it ripped off. Oh yeah, with the little Kimba. white. Yeah, I remember that yeah. little white lion. So it's a tip. It's basically a remake of itself, anyway. Uh, so anyway, that I mean, that's an African story. I I would want to. I'm excited that they cast African Americans in that cast, besides Seth Rogen and John Oliver. We, I mean, it's but cool. I mean, the the majority, you know, they, is they, British. They fit, you know. <laughs> Seth Rogen, you he is Pumbaa, <laughs> but I'm sure there are black actors who could really have pulled off Pumbaa. Yeah, you know, we could have got Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean that—that's my point. Is that uh, we're 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 giving that a nod to say, okay, that's an African story, even though it is completely fictional and it's cats, <laughs> talking cats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and and so if the Little Mermaid is is Hans Christian Andersen, which is the Ice Queen, Frozen, all that. Most of Disney's, Disney's back catalog of fairy tales are like Hans Christian Andersen, traditionally European stories. white people, you know, yeah. stories. And they pull from from that, you know, that's, you know, you, you can uh, make a, a, a story or whatever. You can make a an argument that that's why they're all white or whatever, other than predominantly white people during that time but um 
uh, <laughs> I got caught up. So anyway, yeah. So that should that should those be white people? Oh well, she's a mermaid. That's a fictional thing. Okay, but, I get that. But if you don't, do you not need to give a nod to its its roots on that? And I'm I'm wondering because, for instance, you also have Heimdall, who is a Norwegian mm -hmm. character played by Idris Elba, and nobody cared. And he did it well, and everybody loved him, That's me included. Yeah. So I like I'm I'm just trying to find my footing because sometimes it works, sometimes that argument works, sometimes it doesn't. Like, what is what is it? Is it okay to just make all white characters other think, other things, and it's not okay to go the other way? I, I don't it know. It depends. I feel like it depends on. I'm not the trying character. to argue with anybody. I'm just yeah. I'm seriously trying to make sense of it. I think it depends on the character because like it, it's like if it's someone that a character is like ridiculously like famous and like has very deep roots and a very like high fan base like name someone name someone quickly. little mermaid <laughs> <laughs> i can't do that so, uh, superman like you mentioned yeah, superman like, like superman. clark kent like because like we say okay well if the character is is like their essence like shaft his essence he is a black character like He's, you cannot yeah. cast him as asian you can't cast him as white like he is a black character Mm -hmm. Superman. Is He's, he not a white character? What what yeah. is white culture? Superman is not. It's the alter ego that matters. Right? Yeah. Right. It's, so Clark Kent, yeah, like he grew up on a farm in Kansas. Is that white culture? Is, is that white enough? Like what white white people are are a are a mixed bag of people scattered throughout Europe. Well, I guess <laughs> like, that, there is no white culture. Like at the time <laughs> Superman was created, he was supposed to be like, this is America. Like he is the, like everyone calls him the boy scout. He mm -hmm. it's like that. He is what the embodiment of America is supposed to be at the time that he was created. Like I can, I can see the other side of it. Like, yeah, if this is America now and like have Michael B. Jordan there, but for Superman of who he is and when, like, if you're going off the, all the material, source material and everything, he's supposed to be a white guy. Like grew up rural Kansas on a farm, nicest dude that could possibly be until, you know, Lois dies and then he <laughs> loses his mind. But he's just supposed to be like this kind of vanilla white dude unless he has the cape on. And that and that's Clark Kent. Like there's if you change that and still have Clark Kent be Clark Kent, but he's like completely different race, that's gonna open up a whole nother door of like a thousand different problems. I mean, is there not any black people on farms in Kansas? I mean I'm sure there is. Mm -hmm. So I mean it's like what what is I I, I just don't know. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. as far as like representation goes, like I, there's a meme going around where uh, this redhead posted saying, you know, when I was little, I got teased for being red haired, pale and all this stuff. Little Mermaid came out and people started envying me. I want the same thing for black little girls. That's why I want to see um, uh, I, Holly Bailey play the little mermaid i want to see her play ariel for the same reason like i can get behind that 110 percent. that is yeah. amazing that's fine but then i don't know where the movie is going to be like take place because where did the little mermaid take place uh, there's, it don't matter yeah there's mm -hmm. arguments it's like oh it's a coral reef and then jamaican crab so you know and then some people are like oh well it's actually a uh, another mediterranean accent or it's like i don't know it's I don't care as insane. long as she has a real deal uh, essence to want to lure men to their death at the bottom of the ocean. I really don't care. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. That's one of my favorite memes going around right now. So whoever <laughs> created that, I love you. But yeah. yeah. So I'm going to get off my white dude box. And <laughs> <laughs> I think Let's it's pronounced about... soap. <laughs> yeah so I, if i if i've made a bunch of enemies now i i, I apologize <laughs> but I, I i have to i need to for my own sake of clarity i need to figure out what makes sense and what is okay and what's not okay i, I don't know you know in this new paradigm like what what are the rules i don't know you know if you ask people that are like 
21 and younger, they're like, it shouldn't matter. It should be all representation. She's a fictional character. But Smooth, if that's like, if Aladdin was like an all white cast, the world would have burned. <laughs> there so. was even some issues yeah. with that because uh, Arabia is a made up. Uh, or Agrabah, rather, mm -hmm. is a made-up oh, place. Like, I got news for you. <laughs> Arabia there. Um, sorry. So, yeah, so, I mean, you've, you've Arabia... You've lied to. So, Arabia is obviously Arab nations, mm -hmm. right? But there are some definitely definite influences from India. And so, there was some argument as to They who live in the Taj you, Mahal. Right. So, who do you <laughs> cast? Do you cast, in, cast Indian actors or do you cast Arab actors? Both. Like there was some issue with you that. You cast better Jafars. Better Jafars. <laughs> That's all I care about. Yeah. And he, he blue some, genies. Like, acne scars and stuff. He was supposed to be an old, ugly, nasty dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's supposed to look like the methed out uncle that comes to the <laughs> barbecues. <laughs> we need we needed a uh, 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 an Asian or Arab uh, Danny Trejo. <laughs> that role. <gasps> Leave him just alone. Got Danny Trejo. <laughs> I'm just saying he makes a good bad guy. He got the look. Yeah. He ain't scrawny enough. No. no. Jafar's all bony and nasty. Yeah. He got that I've been to prison body. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Danny Trejo or Jafar? Danny no, Trejo. I'm sure. No, I'm not sure because Jafar was the the mm. dude in the beginning. Yeah. Prison but, back then probably, yeah, but prison now, that's Danny Trejo. Yeah. So if we still have you, <laughs> like some of these new ones, like there's there's a big movement right now. Some of these B movies that really weren't just these huge movies like Lion King, like, I mean, the golden era, like some of these off ones like Atlantis or Treasure Planet, like people want to see those made into live action. Where's Emperor's New Groove? Like, who would you cast in that? My bet is Aziz Ansari as the Emperor, but... She's not going to see it unless it's David Spade and her. She's got a valid argument. He's basically a llama the whole time anyway. You're not even going to see him. It doesn't matter if he's from Mesopotamia or whatever. Mm. It's his voice that matters for me. It is his voice that matters. Exactly. And nobody can do David Spade's voice. No, but I think Aziz Ansari could get the essence of the character. Down. I'm not denying that. Yeah, it just but Tom I'm Haverford, from the group like, that we. Thingy. I don't want remakes. I want to yeah. just. I want you to just re-release the movie yeah. on a Friday night. Let me go to the movies and yeah, and that's 4K. it. I don't even care if it's 4K. It could literally be the exact same movie. You could tell me it was different. Give me free popcorn and I wouldn't care. Yeah. <laughs> Give us some original content. I think yeah. that is the deal. Yep. It's like there there's just give us some original content. I have a thousand some, ideas. You can take, make movies yeah. for the rest of your life based on what's in my brain. Mm -hmm. Okay? Get it together. And there are way more talented people than me out there who want to make movies for a living. Mm. You know? Like, I'm just like, you got some ideas. Just do something better. I've got a folder full of ideas. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I though. have one idea. If you if you need business ideas, you can come to me. I got a whole folder full of that. <laughs> yeah. I got some good business ideas. But yeah, yeah. anything yeah. else on the Disney I front? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. In truth, as far as the Little Mermaid goes, I'm kind of indifferent. I understand it, and I guess I'm happy for it. I hope the movie does well on its own but i as far as like as far as some of these other movies i feel like it might be a trend that might start is it gonna be a cartoon mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's no, gonna it's be like action. a live action? action okay can i ask y'all a question for the cartoon mm -hmm. what race was the actress that played the cartoon she was white mm -hmm. was she mm -hmm. we do know that we yeah. do know that she, she was, was on yeah, the voice of she has endorsed the new Little Mermaid. Yeah. Actress, well, too. I'm just asking because, like, a lot of times people are like, oh my gosh, she has to be white and red haired. And then watch the actresses actually. The, act the actress actually has red hair, too. Yeah. Does she really? Yeah. I'm about to lose this girl. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a picture and it's like, it's reddish. 
Why? It's not like vibrant red like the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's just on fire the entire. The only thing that like kind of gets me with like this whole thing is like when it comes to just about anything that's a remake or an adaptation. Like I always would like, I like to know what the source material is, so I kind of know what I'm like, what to expect, what you're gonna do, how you're gonna do it, and what's not right. The not right part doesn't bother me so much, but when it's like a super drastic change, that makes my eyebrow perk up. Like that. Y'all want to get y'all's mind blown real quick? <laughs> okay. Guess who else she does a voice for? Bill Pocahontas. Barbie from Toy Story. Really? Oh, that's cool. Okay. Didn't know Interesting. <laughs> and Sam from Wreck-It Ralph. But. Oh. oh. Cool. So I think, I almost think I'm that so they're sorry. stirring the pot on purpose. I'm so sorry. I said that wrong. Not Sam from Wreck-It Ralph. She was Ariel in Wreck-It Ralph. She was Sam from Enchanted. Sorry. Okay. I just had to clear that up. So, yeah. So I almost think that, that, that Disney is stirring the pot on purpose. That they're doing this. To make money to get people talking because uh with beauty and the beast there was one of the characters they announced was gay uh the, the um the clock no 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 um dimitri no uh, the oh, guy the that played dude. Olaf, the guy that did the voice for josh gad's character Oh, okay. Uh, no one loves like Gaston. Exactly. No yeah, and like I mean, Gaston. it made sense because he was into Gaston, you know? Like Gaston. Uh, but, uh, so, th there was a lot of controversy surrounding that, especially with family-friendly, you know, it's like, oh, well, we're not going to go take our kids to see a gay character. But it was actually one of its its most profitable adaptations. $1.2 Yeah. So, yeah, maybe they're saying, well, it works to have some some, some controversy, some controversy go with it because it gives people a reason to go see it, you yeah. know, to, to despite those people or, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the same concept of like years ago when Chick-fil-A was like, oh, well, the whole homophobic thing or whatever, mm. it was like one of the highest sales oh, for every Chick-fil-A yeah. because all homophobic people decided to come out and be like, yeah, you right. Let's eat Chick-fil-A. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, old people are, you know, just, uh, you know, anyways. I didn't say old people. I didn't say old people. What'd you say? I said, or just regular people. Oh, like, I thought you said, or people. old people. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't say old. I see now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the same concept of like, even if you say anything, even if you didn't say anything mm -hmm. and there's media around it, that prompts the other side of the group to go see it just to piss the other side yeah. off. Yeah, you're basically, it's like the guy when you're in a fight in, in middle school and he's like, baddest one hit my hand. And then they, <laughs> you ever seen that? And no. then so both of you go to hit his hand and obviously one is going to be second. Ooh, he hit you, he hit you. Oh, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> like there's always an instigator. Always. The one trying okay. to get it started. Okay, makes sense. So I think that's what Disney's doing is they're playing their field. Okay. You know, they're marketing oh. to both sides. I see. Because they want our money. Mm -hmm. Don't let Disney take your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Disney Plus wasn't going to be enough. You got to have all my money <laughs> everywhere else too. Mm -hmm. Only Marvel and yeah, that, 20th Century Fox and yeah. everything else on the planet they've wasn't going to be enough of my money. They've got all the best release dates right now too. Like some of the studios are starting out like, hey, wait a minute. We can't. It's going to make, make it harder for us to play ball now because we've got to dance around the biggest player on the field. You know? Mm. Well. Gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> <laughs> now, number three. Stranger Things. Season three. How do you do three? Like this? Like this? Like, like this? this? Okay. I think it depends on what some. mood I'm in. Sometimes I'm like three, and then sometimes I'm like three. I haven't done three like this in a while. Ever since I found out, oh my gosh, you can do three like this? This is so I've seen much people do like this, too. Like, if I'm trying to make a point, I'm like. But I feel like a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I used to dress up as a Ninja Turtle for my brother's birthday and stuff and put on jersey gloves and tuck the fingers ah. and do this. Anyways. 
So, Stranger okay. Things 3, <laughs> we're about to get into spoiler territory. If you have not seen Season 3 of Stranger Things yet, go watch it. It's great. Don't miss it. But we're about to get into some details. <sighs> yes, all them details. So, first off, what's, what was your take? Did you like it? Did you not like it? I liked it. It was a very fluent story that made me want to watch it all at once. Which I try not to do with shows. I try to savor them because I know once they're over, I can't watch. I don't want to watch them again for a minute. Mm. So, but this was just like, dang it, I got to go ahead and do it. Mm. So it's very bingeable. Yeah. Um, the very first episode. What happened in the first episode? I remember the end now, but now I can't well, Before we get episode. into details, what, what was your general take on the season? What did you get? What did you think? I liked it a lot. Any thoughts? You, you that, said a general okay, thing. Okay. Yeah, without, that's my without, general. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, I I, I agree with with Quinn. The the story was very cohesive. It, it there wasn't anything that just stood out to me as just like, well, that's weird. You know, it it just it flowed really nicely and it. It built upon itself, and just the momentum picked up, and it 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 ended very nicely, I think, too. And it left me wanting more. I liked it. I thought it was great. Probably, I don't know if it was better than season one. A lot of people are saying it is, but I still, it was definitely better than season two. Even though I like season two still, but like season two, no, season some people two. didn't like season two at all. I mean, I had some mm. issues with this season but i liked it that mm. didn't take they weren't so large of issues that i didn't like it yeah okay. I, there was a couple yeah you're right there was i had a couple things not as many things as you but a couple things what lady had some things she didn't like yeah i didn't really like how it ended um because for me i think that can i can i start talking about yeah, it yeah let's just jump, jump right in I feel like it's going to be more difficult to bring it back. And like, is it just Eleven story now? Is it Eleven story when she comes back to Hawkins? Is mm. it all of their stories? Because how they did it, it was more of Eleven story because she has the superpowers. But it was, I felt like almost equally so, Mike and Dustin and, and Caleb yeah. and all of their story. Will's story, if not more than Eleven, because he's the one who got trapped in the Upside Down. You know, it was almost mm -hmm. Will's story. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really like how Age they moved season away. Season two or this season? All of, like, I said I don't like how they moved away. But I'm talking about oh, like th gotcha. all, through all three seasons, I felt like it was equally about everyone else, mm -hmm. not just Eleven. So now I'm just wondering how they're going to try and make it work. Um, but I understand why they did it to a certain extent because it's the whole end of summer camp feeling yeah. like it's the whole, Oh no, now we all have to move away that a lot of people go through. A lot yeah, of people have true. that feeling. It, um, and a lot of people move at the end of the summer, go to different schools, la -dee -da -dee -da. Mm -hmm. I can see why they did that. And the, the resonance that that would have with some people, but I just think it's going to make it a little difficult. I think they know what they're doing. I think they know what they're doing, <laughs> but I only say that because now that you said that, it just made me think like, oh, they're doing it the way they're doing it because it's like symbolically saying, all right, this was the end of that story as you know it, yeah, and now we're moving forward to mm -hmm. something yeah, different, to a bigger world, I think, yeah, because now that the U.S. government is involved and and even the little expose thing at the end. Where, you know, now the state or... or everybody knows. Yeah, everybody knows something is up with Hawkins, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so I, I think it makes sense. You know, they've got the Russians. Um, That's prob. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so the, we've got the Russians. Uh, the, it's a much bigger world. We've actually gone somewhere else besides Hawkins. Even though season two, we kind of went somewhere else with Eleven for that episode. Mm -hmm. You know, which I'm, that was the only, one of the big questions I had is like, why didn't they bring all of them back? It made sense with the multiple bad guys that they introduced the multiple uh, experiments, yeah. you know, that she would need help, even though, especially since she was struggling everything, even though I, I did like that they kind of um, took her out of play to where it wasn't just the same ending as last season 
where she just closed it by herself, you know? Yeah. They had to find a different way. But also, I mean, she doesn't even have powers anymore. Yeah. You know, she's she's kind of normal. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how they're going to reintroduce that. Um, yeah. I mean, because it's a whole new challenge that we haven't seen. Yeah. I, I like this aspect of Eleven's character. It's like, this is some, this is new ground for her, you know? Yeah. She and uh, especially, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it's going to, from what I've seen in other things, I tend to agree is like something's going to bring him back to Hawkins. And I think it's going to be Hopper. The reappearance. Of what I don't mm-hmm. understand is like, and that's going to be why, why you chose back, to break our hearts for no dang good reason. Mm-hmm. What part? Hopper. Oh, I cried. So did she. <laughs> like, I was looking at her, I was like, why are you crying? <laughs> I got up, went to bed, and cried myself to sleep. Like, Hopper was, upset. was the Hopper. Heart. He's the heart. He, he's Hopper, okay? And David Harbour, you play Hopper really well, but you're kind of we- of a weirdo. Um, <laughs> but I media. messaged you on Instagram, and you didn't reply. I'm really upset about it, okay? I needed consolation, <laughs> and you didn't tell me what was going on. I don't respect that. But then you just go blab to everybody else and be like, yeah, ho- that was Hopper in there. Yeah, according to EW, uh, they, he did a... Uh, shoot, what was it? Screen Rant or some some other? I forget. He was doing an interview with somebody, and I forget who it was. Uh, but they he basically confirmed that Hopper is the American. In, because in they the reference cell. him as the American several times mm-hmm. in in throughout Especially this season. Especially when he was fighting season. Terminator. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I get that, but like, why why would you do that to us? Like, mm-hmm. why would you do that to Joyce? Joyce has. To me, this is going to be a huge heck, character y'all. arc for Joyce. Mm-hmm. She lost not one, but two, two people to this, mm-hmm. to this system. She almost lost her son. She had to move away. Twice. This is mm-hmm. a big deal for Joyce, you know? So I love that, yeah, every that season this is becoming somebody. more about Joyce or just as much about Joyce as it is the kids. Um, and again, uh, just as much about Mrs. Wheeler as all of the other kids. Like this is such a well done show that mm-hmm. shows the dynamics, Even, yeah. and it doesn't feel like it's too spread yeah. apart. Even though with Mrs. Wheeler, they they didn't really kind of give the uh, closure there. You know, they kind of alluded that things were getting back to normal with her and her family, but there wasn't really just like a, hey, I'm not gonna cheat. But, but it's the representative <laughs> it's a of like. Ending story. <laughs> <laughs> it's a representative of like just the normal things that you face. She has been sheltered from everything happening with Will, everything happening with Eleven, and she's fighting her own battle at mm-hmm. home of mm-hmm. like dealing with just normal, normal life. Yeah. And that is a battle of, in and of its deciding own. Deciding to cheat is normal for some people. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> 80s housewife? <laughs> as, as, as you give multiple shout, out, shout outs to. Uh, uh, gorgeous male actors out on the yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the issue. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so I really like that aspect mm-hmm. of it. It's a different take on it, but it's not like one of those shows where, like Twin Peaks, where every single thing connects and they make it so obvious that everything is intertwined. It's like mm-hmm. she's sleeping with this dude's husband who's sleeping with this dude's wife who's sleeping with this dude's sister who's what? related to the dead girl the old twin peaks yeah did you did you get i watched these that i watched episode one and two and that was enough okay <laughs> it's just like, it, it gets way deeper than that's that. what i'm saying it's not it's not like one of those shows where it's like this connects and this connects mm. and this connects i don't know i felt like everything did connect pretty well it did but smoothly mm-hmm. it wasn't like a here hit you in the face it connects uh, it just yeah. It was a well-rounded I, connection. Yeah, I guess which is why we come to the point where the the deal with Robin felt like a, 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 a felt off because because it like it, yeah. one one show one thing I was I think we're talking about Col- the deal with Robin being gay. Yeah, because one thing I, I was watching Collider and they were talking about it and they were saying that like every character is an a- archetype and they are exactly who they are. The good guys are the good guys, bad guys are the bad guys. And you know who's who, 
but then they give a little switch in there and that's like not normal with you know you're not used to seeing that on stranger things so yeah i just don't like that it didn't seem cohesive for her character mm -hmm. i don't care if she's gay straight bi trans pan i don't care whatever oh because there's, there's trans two. and pan mm -hmm. okay um, i get you yeah i don't care what bothers me Plus. is that it didn't seem like it lined up mm -hmm. that's what bothers me yeah and there's a reason for that because according to maya hawk who is ethan hawk and um i just went blank insert name here <laughs> and um ah i'm gonna kill look bill oh. no uma thurman uma thurman she what that's their daughter yeah Ethan, Maya Hawk is Ethan Hawk and Uma Thurman's daughter. What? Uh, and she, I think, to, I mean, she was the breakout new star, I thought. Like, she did really well in her role. I liked her character. Uh, but according to her, she looks like they, her they were going to play, like, they, it had, they had written her and Steve getting, Robin and Steve getting together at the end. But a few episodes, they'd already filmed a few episodes and they decided to change it. For, she didn't as far as I know she didn't say why but they decided to change it which I guess makes sense because in the first few episodes it seemed like she was really into Steve and that threw me off I was ready for Steve to get some somebody to throw him a bone <laughs> <laughs> poor Steve or he throw them one do do <laughs> hey yeah uh, yeah, I, that was it. Was strange. <laughs> yeah, the Again. thing with him and Nancy, what like, did we get resolution on that? Was that season two where they broke up? Or Nancy just kind of went. Well, yeah, yeah, kind of at the end, he was just like, just go be with you know, go with them. I know that's where you want to be. Mm. And then he got beat up by Billy. Mm. Really? Yeah. yeah. He finally won a fight in this one. I remember <laughs> he killed that man. What are you? Doing? <laughs> I thought, no, no, he got up. He got up. He did get up, but he swooped him around for like, wow. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. He was Dustin's over here commentary. yelling, he broke the transponder. Like, nobody <laughs> <Yeah>. cared. <laughs> I, I thought for sponder. sure he was going to whack and then look at it and it would be broken. Because <laughs> it was like, how's he going to call somebody now? But he, that's what, not um, what they were doing anyway. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot about what happened in season two between them. Uh, Nancy and Steve because when s season three started I was like oh my gosh they're together I'm yeah. so happy yeah and I'm, I'm gonna rock your world for here for a second did you know I am going blank on names what is dude's name Will Will's brother no who's Nancy with Will's brother what's his name <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all sit on this one Jonathan Byers. Jonathan oh, Byers. Sure. The actor that plays Jonathan Byers is British. Is he? I think I did know that. He is. I, I saw an interview with him and uh, the girl that plays Nancy. Did y'all know Billy was Australian? Yeah. I did know I that. saw that too. And did y'all yeah. see him without his hair? <laughs> uh, Boss Logic, who does like comic books and posters and stuff, did one uh, of him as Wolverine. I saw one meme that was him because he obviously that's not his hair, mm -hmm. and but he still had the mustache. It was like this looks like uh, the human version of Shrek. <laughs> like, okay, don't be so mean to that boy. Yeah. Um, um. The the other issue that I had with it is like Jonathan Byers has grown. Yeah, He's well, graduated. Yeah. Why in the heckin' did he have to move? Why did him and Nancy have to split up? That because, seems so think, ridiculous to me. I, yeah, he that's true. Feel, Cause like his character's always been like, I, my dad's not here. I have to help my mom. I that's get what that I he's the man of the too, house, yeah. but like, still, you can't just yeah, send him Will, money. Will's like fifteen now. Like yeah. he can stay home alone. <laughs> yeah, like it's. I mean, granted, what they've all been through, and they just came back. Uh, I could see where he would want to hang yeah. around. I would want to hang around too for a second. Just a second. I would want to hang um, around with Nancy. Really? <laughs> he would he would like to. Shut up. Um Did y'all get like like them like throwing little subtle hints that Will's probably gay? I saw that. I yeah, did pick up on that. Yeah. You know, and he said, you know, when you I'm sorry you don't like girls. And I don't know if that was like he hasn't hit puberty type yet. Or Bro, smooth pause for like 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah that's what I, made it that's, yeah. seem like it was yeah. more. 
Yeah, and I'm I'm fine with that because yeah. you're, you're leading into that. That makes sense. You know, you haven't you haven't had him into girls like him and Mike fighting over Eleven or anything like that. You know yeah. what I mean? And then him to go that direction, like that would make sense. But for Robin, where she's like smooth, like giving googly eyes to Steve for the first half of the season and then suddenly be like, oh, sorry, Steve. Yeah, I don't like dudes. That last scene, <laughs> that last scene with them when they were going for their interview at the video store, which that's that's a concept some children will never understand. I can't wait for season four when they're working at the video store. Uh, like, it seemed like she was kind of into Steve still. Like, I thought so too. She was like, mm -hmm. he's like, just my friend. It was so uncomfortable because not only was she like, so that's the the guy who's working at the video store, Craig or whatever, Clark or something. Yeah. That's the guy from the game store in season two when they find Max. Really? Yeah. Oh, Mad I Max. He looked familiar. So he's from he's season got two. Steve's hair too. Yeah. <laughs> he's got like a Steve and Bill Billy like, mix. Oh, uh, like yeah, he totally <laughs> wanted to be Steve the hair hair. <laughs> Uh, but it was so uncomfortable because she's like the girls will come in in droves hot girls and I was like that's fine but you were over here making googly eyes at Steve and then you're over here making googly eyes about these imaginary girls like can you just decide what's going on well yeah. actually now that I say that I'm sorry I, you do you and your life you don't have to decide you can be and do whatever you want to do all right so speak while we're talking about like issues on it i i grew up in the 80s and the 90s obviously and i did grow up in a small town similar to hawkins even though hawkins is is a little bit bigger we never had a mall uh but it, um there were a couple social issues like the like the homosexuality thing. I get why she didn't want to speak out yeah. and let people know. Get that. Because it's the 80s. Yes, there were openly yeah. gay people. George Michael, who I smooth thought was straight because every video had a sexy girl on it. <laughs> but... <laughs> that would almost have you convinced. Boy George. Like, it was becoming normal for extravagant people to come out, or you know what I mean? But n normal small town people, mm -mm, it was not acceptable in any form or fashion. And especially not in a small rural yes. town. Yeah, Midwestern town like that, not okay. Like, not, not was, was not gonna happen. But what's even less okay? What was even less okay was interracial couples. That oh, they, they do not touch. Yeah. They did not even touch they didn't it. Even, they didn't touch I that at all. About that. They're going yeah. to the mall together. They're holding hands. Yeah, They're going that, to the movies. That would have smooth played into. Um, uh, I keep saying Caleb. That's his real name. Billy. No, K uh, the the black Lucas. Oh, I was about to say the black kid. <laughs> the only <laughs> black kid. <laughs> Uh, yeah, not only are we not going to Yeah, I mean, we're doing, we're doing an 80s movie. Got to have the token black kid, right? Uh, <laughs> our show. So anyways, yeah. So Lucas, that he had he talked about how difficult it was for him and Max to be openly together, or even with their parents. I, could, I get it. She's from California. She's down with that, probably. But she's probably still going to be getting pressure from the community, teachers, uh religious community from her openly abusive brother yeah who was probably using the n-word on a regular basis well um, he's from california too so probably not even so there's a lot of either way yeah even so but um that was probably still a huge deal and they don't even touch on that and when when lucas is trying to help um i cannot think of finn wolfhard's character mike kylo ren jr <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Mike, nice. when Lucas is trying to help Mike with Eleven, he could have totally referenced, like, I get it, you guys are different. She's not going to see things the same way. You're not going to see things like her. That This is how me and Max work through that. You know, that could have been relatable. That would have made sense. Like, they, Smooth could have brought that in. Especially as, as much as they are in public. Like, 
and it wouldn't have had have to have been one of the main storylines or anything just, just something that is yeah. happening in their world you could have even had a dirty look Yes, from a mall several. goer. Oh, yeah. Anything Everywhere. to make us know that you thought about that. But it looks like you didn't think about yeah, it. He That's would, what I'm he disappointed have got, in. He would have just gotten dirty looks for being with a bunch of white kids. Yeah. In, in the, the mall. 80s. Big time. Yeah. So I think that's I had like black one kids, of the and big... I remember getting dirty looks like, why are you why are you friends with him? And I was like, what do you mean? I was, I, I was I had black kids. <laughs> I had friends. But what you said I, I had black kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm Trump. That's my black guy. <laughs> I remember he said that. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. In my head I said I had friends who were black. I had black black friends. Um anyways, but I remember like adults pulling me aside, go like saying, "Why are you hanging out with them?" Yeah, and I was oblivious, uh, blessed to be oblivious, you know. But I mean that 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 was a thing. That was definitely a thing. Yeah. But I mean, other than those type of things, I really enjoyed it. It was still good. Um, it was still like really nostalgic, had a lot of pop culture references, just droves of them again and again. Um, some really good ones. Best best pop culture uh, segment of the entire thing, I thought, was, was uh, concentrated into one statement. And that was, you who, Nancy Drew, where are you? Yeah, <laughs> that was good. Yeah. That was good. Mm -hmm. That was it. I'm done. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to get into them. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, of all the new people that you cast, uh, the mayor, the Terminator, uh, the Terminator. Robin, yeah. you did so well. Yeah. You did so, so mm -hmm. well. Carl L. Eul How do you say Lusky. Uh, what's the Russian guy? Scientist? Oh, um... Uh Alexi. 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 Oh, that guy. Oh. Yeah. Poor I mean, you Alexi. you made such good choices. Mm -hmm. But what's Carl L's Princess Bride? Who played oh, the mayor? Um, Carl Hughes. It's not Carl, though. Kate, um, Carrie Elwes. Carrie Elwes. Elwes. I, don't I know heard somebody mayor. pronounce it Elwes. I don't even know now. I don't know what's right. Either way... Of all people that you could have made look political, I've never seen him look so political. Like, he, <laughs> he did. did so, yes. so good. It just, I love to hate him, and that's what you want in a He's character such a like slimy, that. slimy, sneaky. Yeah, I just did a really phenomenal job. He was mm. the Wolf of Hawkins. The Wolf of Hawkins. The Wolf Ooh. of Hawkins, like the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> got it. Sorry. Lydia got it. And I didn't even see that movie all the way. I got to the cocaine on the butt and I was out. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. That was actually the point I was the most in. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <clears throat> also, oh, spoiler for Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Um. um. Yeah, I just felt like they did such a phenomenal yeah, job with it, casting. Yeah, it was done and written so well. I uh, would I love to like study under them or just like know how they, because I'm sure. Can you imagine like how many uh, what are they called? Pop culture references. Jesus, no. <laughs> Story structure. When people go out for writers. a thing. Auditions? auditions. Auditions. How many auditions they had to wade through to be in Stranger Things? Man, so I, I so live in many. Arkansas, and I got a like a, I, because I'm on the email list of the the casting place that does Stranger Things. I got emails to come be in Stranger Things. I ain't know that. Yeah, because remember, <laughs> I was like, we, we seriously considered one night, like me driving, doing a thing, and then driving back, because it films in Atlanta, which is. How that was this away? Stranger Things. It was. It was Stranger Things three. He's full of crap. As as a as an extra, not a not a main role, of course. I'm not that, <laughs> yeah, because I would have told him no to that. Radar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, if a car got thrown at you, if you were a Russian soldier, I would have been like, oh hey, I know that guy. That <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Super cool. Yeah. So I mean, I just am thankful for how well they do and like how heavy of a consideration they have to take that into um to be able to get quality quality actors like mm -hmm. that um and and even like relative unknowns like 
We didn't know Robin. We didn't know the Terminator. And still, they did so good. I've mm -hmm. never seen Alexi in anything. And, like, those were yeah. quality actors. Real quick, can we talk about how the Terminator liked just kidney punching people? Like, he <laughs> just liked just turning them over. Then, duh, duh. I'm like, geez, can you stop? <laughs> can we talk about how he wasn't even supposed to be a Terminator and he was the Terminator? He was like, a Terminator. how? Like, like, you not only said, hey, I'm going to make an 80s movie with a bunch of like pop culture references and make this show into this. You said, no, I'm going to book the Terminator for it. <laughs> <laughs> even like, even the mayor even called him Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he, so good. He got shot. He went down. He got back up and was like, oh, wait, time out. Are you really a Terminator now? I was, it was like, oh, it's a bulletproof vest. Yeah. But Okay. <laughs> I would have believed it if you had not showed me the vest. Yeah. I <laughs> would not have even thought about yeah, it. Yeah, so many good references. In yeah. That. And that, that blows my mind. Like, I want to know, do they, are they such nerds that they know this stuff off the top of their head, just writing and they pull it on the fly? Or do they, like, go back and study new references that they're not aware of? Like, for example... There was one poster where they're looking around, it's like Steve is looking around the corner and there's a poster in the background and it's a book written by uh, like a, a foreign diplomat, a Russian foreign diplomat at the time that had just come out. And it is a, it is a, uh, a callback or not a callback, but it is a, an Easter egg to Alexei's story. Huh? Yeah. Like it's, it's deep. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. I smooth think that this started out like years ago. Like 10 years ago, they had this idea, but it was just a campaign for D&D. &D. And like, you know what? This would make a great TV show. Yeah, because basically these are characters on a quest the entire time. That You watch the show like their D&D &D characters go on a quest. That's, that's what it is. Anytime Eleven does like something, when she threw Billy through the wall, she rolled a 20. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's why Will was so cool with like, I'm so upset. All my D&D &D stuff is, I'm throwing it away. But then as soon as this happened, he's like, I'm in. <laughs> because he's like, quest begins. <laughs> Have you seen the memes that are surrounding uh, like him wearing the purple uh, the Will the Wise. Will the Wise stuff. Uh, there's one from that 70s show um, when uh, Topher Grace. What? Topher Grace. I don't know. The other two couples are together and the main son, whatever. Um, Eric Foreman? Yeah. Him. Thank Topher you. Grace. Topher Grace. Grace. <laughs> yeah. Is that his real name? It is. Yeah. I'm his, his so real name sorry is, for you. His real name is Christopher, but instead of going by Chris, Chris he decided he to go by Topher, Topher for some reason. To be different. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he was called that his entire life or if he just like woke up one day and he was like, you know what would be cool? Tofu. <laughs> yeah, man, that will be great. Uh, he just smoked with Shaggy for whatever reason. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> He's sitting over there on the side. Are y'all talking about the curly haired dude? No, that's no, high. Gonna... That's okay, Danny Just checking because yeah. yeah. he's the one who was high all the time. So I was just checking. Yeah. <laughs> His literal name is Hyde. <laughs> Shut up. He's he's anyway. a Masterson, Alana Masterson from The Walking Dead. That's her brother. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> anyway, the meme was that he's just sitting over there with the Will of the Wise stuff on, just like <laughs> because the other two couples are making out. <laughs> it's just so funny. And y'all ruined it because it took so long. Sorry. It's fine though. <laughs> I'm dead inside. I thought it was funny. That's so funny. Yeah. I know, another meme. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I I just want to mention that I love Scoop Troop, and the, I want I love that group. Seeing them together, I was a little upset that Dustin at first that Dustin wasn't in the main party, mm -hmm. but him as part of Scoop Troop worked so well. It just made sense. Yep. It's three converging storylines. Mm -hmm. And um, four, because yeah. Lucas's little sister. Did yeah. Not get the whole time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, just checking. Yeah, she she was obviously a nerd because the math stuff or whatever, but she was like such in command. Like I've never seen it. Like a, what, was she, what was she nine? Ten. It was get ten. It straight. Yeah, she, <laughs> she like she was in in control. Like I've never seen somebody that was just that quick 
Like yeah. that almost like bordered on fake to me because <laughs> she was so quick witted and so in control. And it was like, it was a little bit too much, even though I've seen like, oh, of course, like eighties TV shows, Punky Brewster and stuff like that, where the, mm -hmm. the kid is just like sass, sass, sass. But that was like borderline too much there. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like the idea of her joining the party where they gave her the, the D and D box and stuff at the end. Where I thought it was a accepting. Toy Story movie. After a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Wow. So my favorite parts: Scoop Troop, and the Never Ending Story. That I was loving I like every second part. of that. I like that part. Of course, they. Oh, I okay. loved that they that they featured getting Marazaro. Maserato. I, is it Maserati? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say his last name. Uh, he, he is from Broadway, and he can sing like like a child. He was star. on Les Mis. Yeah, like he's oh. he's super talented. Got some pipes, and he the, should have been the Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to shake things up, uh, <laughs> Little Mermaid didn't have curly hair. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, he is a legit singer on Broadway. And the girl that they brought in, she is from Matilda on Broadway. Mm. Susie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she killed it okay. too. I thought that was like, I, that is one of my all time favorite songs growing up. And I was a little disappointed that they didn't make, they didn't reference that movie the entire thing. And then at the end, we just get like this dump. And I, oh, I loved every second of it. Well, my favorite part was the uncomfortable. Uh, in the beginning when the Billy's walking past the moms, it was just so uncomfortable and I loved every second. Yeah, I It was love like how watching they... the dinner party on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I love how they reestablished his character as a badass. Yeah. Because last season it was like, eh, he's just a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> More than a butthole. Yeah. Yeah. He was he was not likable last season, but this re this season he was likable for different reasons. Because he, he was, was a badass. Yeah, I was about to say he yeah. was a likable badass. Yeah. And now he did. Yeah. Yes, I did. I knew as soon as they started showing his memories, I was like, oh, he's dead. He's <laughs> dead. We're, we're starting to like him too much. <laughs> yep. Um, what else? What was my favorite part? Every time that somebody didn't care that the person that they were about to slam into a wall was a child. <laughs> because there was a <laughs> lot of, like, just walking up backhand, yeah. head and wall, through a wall, Kick in the chest. No one got kicked in the chest. But the, yeah, there was a lot of like, I don't care that you're a child. I'm going to beat you up now. What are y'all talking about? Like, well, every time Billy showed up and like, no one could fight him. So he just started beating folks up. Yeah, oh, when he when almost he's killed the, Max. And okay, yeah, okay. When he's the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I was, I was a little... Well, I, I wish they did it a little bit, but some of it, like when they drove off in the car, I was happy to see that Max wasn't in the car when they hit the car or when, when Billy slammed into him and they just, or when they slammed into Billy and then just up and left, I was like, oh, Max not going to say anything about that's her brother could be dead, but yeah. then turn out she wasn't there. They so, didn't make it yet. Yeah. And then, yep. So, I mean, I felt like maybe she was a little, uh, they could have played up her wanting to uh but you have to remember have that's her abusive stepbrother that's true but it's still her brother you know stepbrother I mean? yeah stepbrother but yeah but i mean it's yeah anyways i felt like it was a good line of like sympathy versus like reality of the situation mm -hmm. i felt like when when it was like really like this is billy possibly gonna die she had the right emotions yeah. i felt like it was authentic mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I, 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 I did like Billy's uh, storyline, his character arc. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, and yep. then he used his freakish strength to save Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, is that all you guys want to say about the season in general? We're good. So let's get into the after credit scene. Hopper. There are, there are obviously theories that he he lived or whatever and you know there's no confirmation outside of david harbour basically nodding that that's him because they re you know it was a big clue that they called him the american the entire time 
Uh, but there are still a lot of people out there that think it is Papa Matthew Brenner. Modine Brenner in the in the lockup. I forgot he was alive. Yeah, uh, season two. Remember the the yep. light person, the old. Yep. chubby guy the old old the guy butler from jesse yes That's where i know him from speaking of he jesse. literally said the same thing and i was like yeah. yeah yeah i don't think that was him though but he looked he looked yeah, a lot like been... him speaking of jesse uh, uh, more yeah that's sad yeah but yeah i hope not i'd much like it for it to be hopper but yeah. i still think somehow hopper just jumped into the portal yeah and just kind of was he was kind of hoping on hoping yeah, I, I need to watch it again, but I, I they were obviously in a new facility because mm-hmm. they, they were under the mall, not the one we're used to seeing. But I, I, I remember think... the old one being too, like the platform was obviously way too far away from the, the rip or tear. And it's I thought that this one was too, even though he did kind of turn back and look at it. And that's why people are saying he jumped in or whatever. Um, but... I, to me, it seems like it was too small or it was too far away for him to have gotten into it. Uh, I, I'd like to see how that made sense. But I think, for me, it. I think the reason they showed uh, Joyce and, I uh, forget his name, the other guy, uh, leave down the flight of stairs that was towards the tear and, and go out uh, the side door was to show that's how Hopper got out. Hmm. Because I don't... It just makes sense to me. Uh, and I think that Hopper on his way out was captured. Uh, and for whatever reason, Joyce and them weren't. Maybe they missed the Russians or whatever. But yeah. Well, by that time, like the the army came in because like they were still there when the army got caught. Like when the army was going through the base, no Russians. Mm-hmm. They like gone. Yeah. So I think that's why they just missed them. Mm-hmm. But can you imagine like Joyce having to bury two people and then they're alive? Uh, when she finds out that Hopper's yeah. alive, she did that to Will. Mm-hmm. Like Joyce's storyline is so tragic. such a big deal. Yeah, so tragic. Yeah. Oof. Also, that wasn't the butler from Jesse. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, he looked a lot like him. I had to look yeah. it up. Um, so there, there's you know if you if you look at the scene, you break it down, Joyce. Uh, he gave her the nod to turn the keys. She re- she looked away, turned the keys, and then like looked down, like because she couldn't see it happen. But because she's stretching. Re- well, yeah, she also closed her eyes and looked down, like emotionally. She pulled away. Um, but the camera goes back to the thing, and it, and you're getting a shot through the little force field that he created. But he's not standing there anymore. And then it shows the the people in the suits walk up and oh and poof, you know they disintegrate or whatever, and then it shows up there again and there's no sludge, there's no body, yeah. there's no sign of him being there at, at, when it when oh, it happened. happened. So he's out there. Yeah. And Lydia's upset about it. I'm not upset that he's out there. I'm upset that like. Only three months later, y'all are moving, and you don't yeah. even know that. I mean, you have no confirmation that Hopper's dead. Like, mm. you know, I just. If Eleven doesn't get her power, she probably won't get her powers back at the beginning of next season. Yeah. But something else is probably going to come through the rift or over or something that's going to bring everybody back together. Yeah. And then they're probably going to go out and try to find the other experiment somehow. Yeah. And, and I think she's make- going to see Hopper. Well, and she's she- going to get her all of her powers back. Yeah. But right now, her not having her powers makes sense for Hopper to be, quote unquote, dead or not dead. Because she can't from. search for him. Exactly. So she can't search for him because she doesn't have powers. And her, whether her battery is drained or if it's something emotionally, she needs a trigger or something. Seeing Hopper, that's going to bring it back. We don't know just yet. But I mean, she can't even crush a, a Coke can right now. She um, can't even pull a teddy bear down from a closet. Yeah. So that I I wish we would have seen more of her mm-hmm. character are dealing with during the three month time, like dealing with not having her power and that kind of thing. That would be interesting. Think, of course, hopefully we'll see that in the beginning yeah. of season four. I think she has to find a different like well for her power. Mm. Like 
in the last season, like she, you know, when she got angry, she was stronger. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, yeah, that, that works for a while. But like, that made me think of like X Men First Class when uh, Professor Xavier was teaching Magneto how to like make himself stronger. He's like, think happy thoughts. Right. And that she might just need to find a new. Think happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts. <laughs> you can fly, you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> And like, yeah, and she just might need to find a new avenue for her power. That makes sense. I like that. Yeah. All right. So that's it. Uh, looks like it, next season is going to be Thanksgiving, even though they I'm mentioned gonna, Christmas gonna, again. Last season was Christmas and Halloween. So uh, the that's fall so again? Fun. I don't know. Seems like every season is is Thanksgiving. No, and first season was. Was the first? What was the first season? What holiday Halloween. was that? Oh. No, season. Halloween was season, season two. Season two because yeah. of everything. But I remember seeing promos where they were opening gifts, and I thought that was for season two. Season one was Christmas because that's where Steve and Nancy, like, she end. got Jonathan a camera. Yeah, at the very end. At the end of season one. Yeah. This season was summer, 4th of July. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. Let's go to the fall. Yep. Hawkins and fall. Boom, boom, boom. So, uh, is there anything else you guys got for that? How many seasons did they say they were? They're five. Sp they're supposed to go five. I've heard rumors that they're only going to go four. Right? They're wrapping it up after four. Which Netflix is cutting things Cut right now costs, like crazy. Yeah. But hopefully they wouldn't cut Stranger Things. Even though if it did end right now, there's still kind of a nice little bow on it-ish. Except for the after credit scene that kind there's of puts a, a wrench in it. sad that. bow. Also, real quick. Why why, why, they have, why do they have Demogorgon pets? Like, that's like a season one Demogorgon. Yeah. And yeah. I'm confused because when it first came out, it looked like a demi-dog. And then it stood up, and it was Demi Gorgon, and it was white. So it's obviously different than their original one. So I'm confused. Are the Demi dog is is the Demi dog just a baby, baby Demi Gorgon? Yeah, that's what I was getting the gist of. Because like it started out really small, then it molted, and it said, "Oh, they're gonna molt again, and we can't let that happen." Oh, in season two, I don't so. remember that part. Oh. Unrelated, well, sort of related. You know what I thought. The prisoner that they do take out and feed to the Dima thing, mm -hmm. I thought that that was the guy that was helping Alexi put together the thing when Hopper and Joyce went down there and found them. And the Terminator came down when they opened up the bed, they walked down there, and Alexi mm. has got the guy down there. That looked like that guy with long hair to me. It might have been. I don't know. So I thought that that was that guy. Don't know. But I thought. Miss Observant. She's always catching things I miss. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? That's all I can think of. I could talk about this for hours. I love this show. That's all. But I think that's it for us. That is all. Once again, we'd like to say thanks for joining us by YouTube or podcast. If you want to keep the conversation going or you think our theories are really, really stupid and you want to <laughs> say some bad things to us, you can, of course, comment below. Or you can find that information in the episode notes or the website at www. <laughs> okay, let me turn over. <laughs> www.brokendotpicturesno.com And don't forget that you can leave us voice messages and you can cuss us out with your own voice. <laughs> um, or you can ask us questions that we can play on the show or cry ourselves to sleep with. Uh, <laughs> go to www.anchor.fm forward slash the FOMO show to let us know. Uh, yes. YouTube viewers, please like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon ding, ding. for notifications of new videos. If you're on podcast, please leave us five stars in your podcast app. I'm Lydia. I'm Dylan. This is Quinn. Thanks. Bye. Peace.